Good morning and welcome. This is Sunrise Daily on April 1st. I'm Ayo Makinde. Well, it's a beautiful Friday morning here in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital. <laughs> I'm Kairi Okikilu. Well, it's certainly not April Fool's. Good morning. Welcome to Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Well, Clary Maupe has said that she's not going to get into that. What if I told you it was raining outside? What a way to start Friday, right? Yes. And it's not just raining the traditional water. It's, it's raining barnacles as well. What a day, right? I don't know what you're talking about right now. But... You don't know what barnacles are? <laughs> well, I have to check the dictionary. I'm, maybe maybe I'm... Malcolm can help us out here. Malcolm, do you know what barnacles are? What? Well, are you trying to put someone on the spot here, guy? Okay, let me explain. Fine. Okay. okay. So there's water, right, when it rains. And then barnacles, just imagine ice cube, the ice cube. A quarter, or at least less than a quarter of an ice cube. Then, because of the atmospheric, you know, conditions and all that, it's okay. yellowish. It has a hue to it, mm. you know. So that's Barnacles 101 to this morning, right? Well, it's April 1st, so I thought to just give you a taste. <laughs> and I really don't know what is also happening right now. Part of the conversation for this month is the reopening or not yeah. of the of tolling at uh, the Lekki toll gate. Uh, there was a conversation yesterday between the government, the LCC, and the people of the community. Let's, let's take a look. Bridge is a site that is hard to miss, whether as a resident or visitor in that access. The infrastructure was put in place nine years ago under the administration of former governor of Lagos State, Babatsundi Fashola, with a toll system to ease traffic. At the tail end of 2020, toll collection on this link bridge was disrupted as a result of the NSAS protest. And 18 months after, the state government begins to reconsider plans to reopen the bridge. The reason for this meeting with the management of the concession company and Lekki Estates Residents and Stakeholders Association. This decision to uh, and it starts the operations is actually coming also from the concern expressed in some quarters by some uh, residents. LCC is owing a lot of money. It's owing uh, local lenders about uh, 11.6 billion and foreign lenders, including African Development Bank, 31 million dollars. And the effect of this, if we don't begin to offset such debts, is that it's not good for business. For any of us who is trying to raise money through foreign sources, this is the kind of thing they will refer to later to say that we are not good creditors and that we don't pay our debts. But residents disagree with this arrangement. The link bridge at the Ozubamba Dewey Road does not qualify for tolling as they are not highway roads, nor are they bypass roads. They are roads commuted by residents on a daily basis. We therefore say a capital no to tolling. To actually help a bridge maintain its structural strength, there must be a maintenance plan. Where is your maintenance plan? In the last meeting that you had, this, the, the residents of Lekki asked for where are the details of the money that has been collected in the last eight years. How much has been made? How much was spent on loan servicing? Give, there's a Freedom of Information Act in Nigeria that most government officials just choose to ignore. And it is a consensus is yet to be reached as regards resumption of LCC operations at the Lekki Ikoi Link Bridge and residents will be waiting to see if the government will truly go ahead. So that played out uh, some days ago. And as, as a byline, the end of that report said, a lot of people are waiting to see if government will indeed go ahead uh, with the opening of uh, that toll, that bridge, or at least not opening it, but at least starting to toll on that, uh, that axis yet again. There's been a lot of sides to this. I mean, listening to the 
you know, the mood in that room, you will see that there's still a lot of divergence. Residents and stakeholders saying, now is not the time. For some others, it's on the back of the end SARS protest saying, well, we've not quite gotten closure to this. Well, the government will say we have paid as much compensation and, and all of that. But the question, the big question this morning is what exactly will happen uh, on that bridge? Well, we have our correspondent, uh, which we'll be speaking with in due course. But the police in Lagos has also spoken uh, to that uh, particular uh, opening. There have been reports of protests or planned protests or disruption of activities. And according to a statement from the police, uh, the CP, uh, Abiodun Alabi, uh, says that he's assuring Lagosians that the command has put necessary measures in place to enable the safety of lives and property, free flow of traffic, and a peaceful environment for carrying out their respective lawful duties. It goes on to say this assurance has become important uh, following news making the rounds that some Nigerians are planning to protest at the Leki toll gate. So uh, that's the, the, the angle from the police. But is now really the time? Is, there, is, is it okay to go ahead, even though it looks like a consensus has not been reached? Will there ever be any consensus? Government will say, well, there needs to be maintenance. In fact, the image uh, for doing business in Nigeria is also affected as a result of that. Uh, the representative of a state government says their loans are accruing as a result of uh, the closure of that whole toll operation. But the question is, is now really the time to open uh, that bridge. Malpe. I'm going to take you to something that is completely unrelated. So yesterday, um, I happened to know that there, there was an event which held here in Abuja. It was a public presentation of a subnational audit efficacy index 2021. Uh, and it was put together by an NGO called uh, the PLSI. The PLSI is an acronym for Paradigm Leadership uh, Support Initiative. That's what they do. So apparently there was a program put together by the World Bank, which is supposed to um, incentivize transparency on the part of states. And I think also improve the audit system. I know that this might excite Ayo because he's been talking about the Office of the Auditor General for a very long time. Well, that's what this program is about. I understand that the World Bank, I think, sets aside about eight, over $800 million to incentivize states in Nigeria to publish uh, details of their budget, details of their audit, to ensure that the Office of the Auditor General is independent. And there are certain parameters that states are supposed to meet. As they meet these parameters, the World Bank gives them certain monies. A lot of states have signed up to this program as we speak. I think it did through the office uh, or through the, um, through the Nigeria Governors Forum. So as we speak, we know that about 32 states have signed up to it. Um, and a number of states are, you know, meeting up with, they are doing better than others in terms of uh, the parameters that they are meeting up with. Uh, so yesterday, they published the results for 2021 and how states fared. Uh, turns out that Lagos was at the very bottom. Benue State came last in that audit, um, in that particular ratings index, and Lagos came second to last out of all the states that were rated. Um, on, on top on the list were, I think, um, Bauchi and Oshun states. Uh, states, you, you might say, very unlikely, but those were the two states that came first, I think, followed closely by Akwaibom. But Lagos, in terms of transparency, in terms of what it's doing about audit, and one of the reasons why it was doing so poorly was on this question of uh, releasing details about its revenue. And that's something that came up in that conversation. In fact, it is a big part of the conversation that the residents of Leki Iko, of that area, the Leki Ikoyi Axis, are having with the state government. So LCC, we know it is 100% owned by the Lagos state government. But as we speak, we know that the details of its revenue are secret. It is not a secret society. I think that this sort of thing ought to be out in the open. If these are some of the things that residents of the area have raised with the state government, what is so terrible or what is so bad in releasing the figures of its revenue? To say this is how much we took in loans, this is what we're, these are our projections, perhaps they've been affected by 
you know, uh, the dollars that we took and the, the falling value of the Naira. This is how long we think it's going to take for us to recoup the investment. And, you know, this is why it is important that we open up this toll to be able to collect money. Um, and they've talked about maintenance plan. You know, interestingly, the people who live around that axis are people who are enlightened. They're people I believe that the state government should be happy to have a conversation with. They might say, oh, well, we have one with them. That's what you came to cover. But the question is, did you take any of their concerns on board? You can't just wake up and say, well, regardless of what we decided on that deal, regardless of whether or not we're able to achieve any resolution, we're going to go ahead and open the toll gate anyway. That's not how a responsible uh, state government behaves. I believe that they are a responsible state government. I believe that the Lagos state government is responsible. But... Uh, this is how it, it needs to show it. It needs to be able to show it through accountability. So these are the parameters which we use for accountability. I'm not going to support any violence uh, today. Um, I think Lagos has had enough of violence and, you know, and threats of violence. We, we saw the aftermath of the NSAS protest, and I think uh, Lagos is still trying to recover from that. So it certainly needs every revenue that it can get. But there is already a perception. There's already a perception that, you know, uh, there is so much shrouded in secrecy and that the residents feel like they are holding the short end of the stick. The only way that the Lagos state government can ensure that it earns the confidence of its people to be able to do what it needs to do with respect to opening this toll gate and, you know, perhaps other shoring up other sources of revenue is to ensure that it is transparent in terms of how it functions. That's my take on this, gentlemen. Well, there's so much to say about that, but let's see if we can quickly take comments from Olu Phillips, our correspondent, who is right now at the Lekki Toll Plaza. Good morning, Olu. What's new? Well, I'll give it uh, good morning to you guys. We are live here at Lekki Toll Gate um, in Lagos. If you remember this place, October 20th, 2020, um, it wasn't this scene. The serene here, or the environment here wasn't this serene. As you can see, I'm being sandwiched here by policemen um, who wouldn't want us to do what we want to do. They wanted to stop us from working. Uh, we insisted that we had to do what we had to do. Um, as you may also recall, the Lagos State Government says, starting from today, over the next 10 days, they will be experimenting the review, the, 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 the restart of um, tolling at this plaza and th that of um, Ikoyi Plaza. So for the next 10 days, um, vehicles who, from today, vehicles will be passing here for free. Once it is um, 10 days from now, um, you will begin to toll, you begin to pay for toll if you must use the Lekki um, Expressway or the Ikoyi Link Bridge. Uh, this is the situation here. Um, life here in Lekki, and you can see some of the structures, the toll plaza has been renovated, has been rebuilt. Um, the lights are coming on gradually, indicative that um, today, April 1st, will signal um, the beginning of tolling activity, which was suspended um, in October of 28th, 2020. Um, Mark, well, guys, this is not April Fool. This is real. It's happening live, and we are here in Lagos telling you that from this toll plaza, all indications are rife that the Lagos State Government will commence or resume tolling on this expressway. Um, as we find time after now, we'll be able to speak to some motorists and find out what they think as regards um, the resumption of tolling. But earlier, I should also tell you, um, some residents of Lekki who live in Lekki and in this environment had had meetings with the Le um, Lekki Concession Company over the resumption of toll, and they have vehemently made their voices heard to say, we won't... Um, we won't pay for toll. We won't resume tolling. But Lagos State again has appealed for understanding, asking people to show them some level of understanding as this concession is not over. Um, people need to pay so that the company can recoup their money. Recall that when this, um, to, uh, this roads were built and this toll was built, it was meant to be a 30-year um, agreement, a PPP arrangement between the LCC and the Lagos State government. Guys?
Well, uh, Olu, I, I can see, as you said, uh, policemen uh, just to your right, and it's understandable. But I'd like to know as well, uh, there were reports about planned protests uh, that perhaps that end or the other one. What can you tell us uh, about that, the um, mood around The it? truth is, with this assumption, there will be some agitation, there will be some panic. So across the plaza, when we were coming, I noticed um, a Lagos State tax force vehicle, um, what you popularly call Black Maria, hopefully or uh, hoping to pick up some guys in case of those who may be protesting. Um, we are not sure that will happen today, but there, 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 there could be um, such activity around here because uh, from all indications, it does appear that not uh, the residents of this area are not comfortable with the resumption of tolls. So perhaps while we stay here, we'll be able to tell you that if uh, there will be any protest or not in the course of the bulletin. Well, Olu Phillips, we can only uh, wish you well. And please stay safe and as secure as you can because we want you in one piece. We hope you get back let me, safe let me, let me and also sound. Add, let me add this. Okay. Let me add this. Go ahead, Olu. Okay, guys, uh, finally, let me also add that from here, we'll be moving over to the Ikoi, um, Ikoi Link Bridge, which is also another bridge, um, toll bridge, that will be tolled, and resumption, a toll resumption will, will happen there. But for that, you won't be paying cash. Only those who have the electronic stickers will be allowed to use that bridge. We will leave here and get there as soon as possible to bring you updates, guys. Thank you, Olu. We'll hear from you shortly. Okay, let's switch to the papers very quickly. It's a lot to cover. So let's start off with the Nigerian Tribune this morning. And the lead is on insecurity. Take a look at what we have on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Insecurity. Reps talk tough. And you have quotes from the uh, honorables in the House yesterday. It was quite, uh, do I say, an emotional or heated uh, atmosphere in the lower house yesterday. You have a quote from Honorable Nasir Ahmed, uh, from Honorable uh, Asan Dogua. Uh, there were lots of you know solutions, Prof. And in fact, they had to, as it were, close shop. Uh, page two of the Nigerian Tribune has more details. I don't want to get too much into that one, since you find more details on page two. Uh, well, it's not just um, on the Abuja Kaduna stretch that you have insecurity. Also in Anambra State, I see Governor Saludo uh, visiting the scene uh, of an attack, arson attack, he calls it, uh, at Newi South local government area uh, just yesterday. It was raised on Wednesday night, uh, by the way. Uh, just on top of the nameplate, you see this one, EFCC arrests 80 suspected internet fraud stars in Ibadan, 40 in Enugu. That's a total of 120. Uh, page 27, and right next to that, insecurity yet again. Bandits invade housing estate in Kaduna, kidnap customs officer, son, four others. Traditional ruler, three others kidnapped in Abuja. Pastor, son, five others abducted in Kogi. Page 26. Uh, I can actually go on and I'll still talk uh, other insecurity stories, um, but you know, all of them are there on the front page because of our time uh, this morning. There's uh, sports on the back page as well. Indeed, he can't play again this season. And it's coming from his manager, Brendan Rogers, as an Adrian Tribune. The Guardian newspaper is also leading this morning with the Kaduna train attack. Well, it's a new security story. Security threats rising need new strategies, says Niger, Niger president. And there is a host of writers on the front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning. And you also have a big story dealing with unbearable cost of housing and a good number of other stories. 2023, Ndigo to detract us, treat us fairly. Story is on page six. And a number of other stories you'll find on the front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning. Mark well, taking a look at uh, Daily Trust for you, they have this 2023 presidency PDP committee to jettison zoning. That's what they have on the front page. Decision to be finalized Tuesday. Yes, that's what Daily Trust is saying. Uh, 13 Northern Southern aspirants, peak form, Saraki Tambua Mohammed, 
Meet IBB. That is also on the front page of the paper. Uh, what other stories do you have there? You say bandits on rampage in Abuja, Kogi, Kaduna, kill 11, abduct customs officer, others in Zaria. Kaduna City resident Jitri after bomb discovery. That's also on the front page there. Um, other stories, Nigerians react as NFF sack Super Eagles technical crew. British firm to fix a Jaokuta steel for free. That's from the federal government. Uh, you have a number of other stories at the corner. Let's leave it there for Daily Trust newspaper. And turn our attention to Daily Times. Daily Times also leads with the uh, the proceedings in the House of Representatives, saying HOR, that's House of Reps, in agony over killings, suspends legislative business. So, uh, that's something you see across the front pages this morning. And on top of the nameplate, you see Nigeria has attained self-sufficiency in gold. Be right, that's according to the federal government, to commence audit at Ajakuta Steel Plant. I think that was one of the biggest stories yesterday, hearing that well, they will not be, might not be completed before the end of this administration. And I know heartbreaking for a lot of people, but that's what you have. The Vanguard newspaper is also talking about the same issue, only from a different perspective. After train attack, army repels invasion of Abuja by terrorists. That's a win, isn't it? A host of riders on the front page, and there's one of them. We've received 108 calls from people seeking whereabouts of their family members, Kaduna Sema, and a number of other stories, stories on page five of the paper. Right below the picture, indigents flee as gunmen attack local government headquarters in Anambra State. Find that story on page 11 of the paper. Uh, something a little light for the morning, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. having a conversation. Mr. says, the things on the list are too expensive. The annual celebration of your village deities is creating a hole in my pocket. Which of the gods want Irish cream? Mrs. answers, only the elders know. And Mr. responds, how about Cuban cigar? That's the Vanguard newspaper today. At least <laughs> the, the elders will know which one of the gods smokes Cuban cigar. <laughs> Take a look at this. They don't smoke Nigerian cigar. They smoke the ones from Cuba. <laughs> well, some, something to cherry up. It's a Friday. It's a Friday, people. He had lots of things to depress you, but at least there is Mr. and Mrs. to make you laugh. Look at this. 2023 presidency. Northern PDP aspirant intensify plan to produce next president that's what leadership friday is reporting on its front page tambual bala saraki hayatuddin take consensus campaign to ibb in mina nigeria's unity progress more important says ex-military president uh, you can also see this we can't complete a jaokuta plant before leaving in 2023 we saw that brief yesterday from the minister of mines and steel that is also on the front page this morning blames failure on russian ukraine crisis okay uh what else do we have here pmb bags africa road builders award for infrastructure is also on their front page alleged 9.8 million dollar fraud court frees ex nnpc gmd yakubu that story is also there and reps adjourn plenary over incessant killings. That is also on the front page. Let's leave it there for Leadership Friday. Our next up is New Telegraph. Well, take a look at the front page. Politics 2023 is what you find there. Igbo leaders meet, demand presidency. Ask Southeast politicians to insist on power shift, urge political parties to zone tickets to Southeast. You see more details on page too. But, you know, speaking of political parties, just under the nameplate, you see this one. 2023, PDP rakes in 486 million naira from presidential form sales as group obtains form for B. Uh, looks like the political parties are even generating revenue in some states at this rate. Do we, do we need the... Can we divert that fund for some infrastructure development? Or should the government collect it officially on their behalf <laughs> and then tax it? But, that's what you find there, just on a lighter note. 
uh, uh, on top of the nameplate quickly, apps, FG moves to probe Google for aiding loan sharks. FCCPC opens investigation into Jet A1 crisis. So apparently this uh, conversation around loan sharks is still on. I still get messages from time to time. And I'm thinking, what effort tree? That's a new <laughs> telegraph. Uh, Nigeria News Direct has this one. It's still talking insecurity. Nigerians should be allowed to carry arms for self-defense. That's ascribed to reps. Find the details on page 23. It says NSA should resign. It's long overdue, Nolge National President. <sighs> I don't even want to go there. But that's the, the lead of the paper and a host of other stories. Uh, second national tax dialogue. We must stop politicization of tax revenue generation. You know what? I, I, I thought it would be unfair to raise this part yesterday uh, when we had that conversation with Mr. Hidele, but apparently someone else didn't ignore it. That's the Nigerian News Direct this morning. Well, that wraps it up uh, with a look at some of the front pages this morning. Perhaps you have an inkling as to what is next on our lineup, but don't worry, you'll find out in a moment. So stay with us. Just before we go into that conversation, Olu Phillips, our correspondent, is right now at the Lekki Ikoyi Link Bridge. Olu, is there anything different from, you know, the previous location? Ayo, thank you very much. When we promise, we keep our promise here on Channels Television. We are at the Ikoyi Link Bridge, and we promised we were going to come here. If you thought Lagos State Government was joking about the resumption of tolling today, April 1st, then it's not April Fool, it's real. Because all around me here, you can feel the tension. We have riot policemen um, all taking their positions, all, I mean, getting ready in case of any breakdown of law and order. Um, I'm seeing also that they're carrying live ammunition. Um, that's a bit scary, but it's fine. Um, to, my, to my right, uh, if my cameraman can help me, to my right, this um, milk colored um, building is the Lekki Concession Company uh, uh, Administrative Office or Divisional Office or Operational Office, whichever one you call it. This is where people can pick up their tickets, as it were, uh, because on this tolling here, the tolling of this Ikoyi Bridge won't be by cash. If you must use this bridge at any time, when the tolling resumes, you will be using um, an electronic sticker. So, so what we've seen here is a case of um, if there's going to be any kind of protest, then these policemen are already here to make sure uh, that that doesn't happen. And if it's going to happen, that it happens um, in a very peaceful manner. But that tells you the level of agitation. That tells you the expectation that there could be a possible agitation from the people or a pushback from those who have, for this long, over a year now, had their commuting very smooth across um, these tolling systems in Lekki and in Ikoyi here. So Ayo um, is real, it's happening, Lagos State is serious, LCCI is serious. Um, I think the people are also serious in terms of what we have heard before now as regards the agitation not to pay this toll or not to have the tolling system um, resume at this time. Ayo. From what you can see, Olu, I suspect that there isn't any gathering of people yet, and um, that's probably why you're still hanging around. Ayo is still uh, within 7, 7.30. We are still within the hour between 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm sure people are still trying to grab some coffee uh, to and test the waters and see what will happen later in the day. But uh, it may be just too early to have people begin to gather here. But Perhaps the security agencies have beaten those number of people who want to come out here for protest to it. But as it were, uh, as it goes, hopefully uh, it shouldn't be something that will degenerate and bring us back to the dark days and those times when there was a lot of disruption, um, regardless of the controversy of what happened. October 20th seemed to be very strong and very um, awake in the minds of the people. Well, Olu, I can see a large sign behind you that says no cash payment. But just to confirm uh, for our viewers and, you know, Lagosians at large, has tolling started on that uh, Lekki, that Ikoi Link Bridge? Kayode, has tolling started yet? Kayode, um, after sunrise, 
pick up your vehicle, drive down here, make sure you have gotten the sticker if you must use this bridge. If you have not, okay, I'm sorry, um, you will be turned back. That's what the indications are right now. Uh, after now, I'll be sniffing to see or to hear what possibly could be the modality. Uh, I can see as we're, as we're driving that we see a lot of vehicles, private vehicles parked on the road, and those are people who have already gone in to either um, reactivate their already... Um, uh, established ticket because before that, that was suspended some people already had tickets up to one month and beyond and so they've come to reactivate it or to get new tolling systems um, ticket for the resumption of the tolling if what Lagos state government has promised starting today is anything to go by but it seems that like they're serious okay just to be clear Ulu, uh, tolling has begun at that um, link bridge but hasn't begun at the other end where you reported earlier, or there's, are there still tests running it? Just to be clear, to reiterate. What we see, and uh, which is typical of any strategy, is to test the waters. There are two bridges here. Of course, you know this area is highly uh, populated. It's a highbrow area, so so to speak. People around here, uh, if I may borrow a local parlance, they are tush people, so they may be able to listen to you or listen to your appeal or listen to what you got to say if you need them to reason or come to terms with reasoning. Perhaps that's why the resumption is being tested here before the bigger area where you have people coming all the way from Aja. Mind you, that is the Lekki Ekpe Expressway. So if you're going to Ekpe, you're going to Lekki, you're coming from VI, that is the main um, artery or road artery. So um, I, I think the Ikoyi Bridge is to test the waters and see if people and check compliance, calculate and see the percentage of compliance and perhaps be able to send that report to those who are determined to get this system on, up and running. Well, uh, thank you very much, Olu. Clearly, it's going to be a very, very interesting day, uh, and I trust that you cover all the ends for us. But more importantly, please stay safe. Get back to us when you have more, please. Yeah, we'll be safe. We'll see. We know how to do it. We, we trust in God. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, our correspondent Olu Phillips uh, reporting uh, live at the Lekki Ikoi end of Lagos State. Well, it's not just in Lagos uh, that we have uh, a lot of um, occurrences. We've had incidents of insecurity, especially on the Abuja Kaduna end. You've seen reports in Anambra as well, in Kogi, and and you just wonder how do we wrap our heads heads around all of this? So this morning, uh, we're taking on the Abuja Kaduna end of this conversation. First, it's been what four days now uh, since that unfortunate attack on the Abuja Kaduna train, where we had eight lives lost and uh, a lot of people injured. Still, many people unaccounted for. Are, have they been kidnapped? Are they home safe? Lots of questions to ask. And this morning, uh, to do that with us, we're joined right here in our Lagos studio by Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo, former Army officer, security risk management consultant, and defense strategist. It's great to have you on the program, Colonel. Thank you, Kaidi. We'll also be having this conversation uh, in our Abuja studio. We were joined uh, by engineer Fidel Okiria, who is the managing director of Nigeria Railway Corporation, NRC, who joins us live uh, from our Abuja studio, as you can see. Good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning on the program. Good well, let me begin with you. You've been uh, the man in the eye of a storm for a few days now, and I'd like you to bring us up to speed. Uh, what more can you tell us about uh, this incident, the uh, search for those unaccounted for, and essentially uh, trying to secure that end and rebuild it? What more do you know uh, on this? Uh, it's, a, it's a bad day, or it's a bad, a bad week. And we are trying to, to be strong in spirit and so. And uh, we've been to the site, we saw the level of uh, damage to the track, to the rolling stock, and we also been to the hospitals. And we thank God it could have been worse, but we still have to give uh, 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 glory to God. The, the issue now is how do we move ahead? Uh, we had, 398 passengers that bought, uh, bought ticket for that particular trip. 
from our system, 362 we have validated to travel. That's excluding the staff because those are not expected to buy tickets. And the train took over 6, 6 10 p.m. and was supposed to arrive at the uh, station at 7.45. And after 10 minutes, the station master raised an alarm that the train has not been sent and they have to arrange a search party. But do you, the, the search team had gone short and reported back, but then we were not sure what was happening. So we had to wait for the details and we got the detail, then alerted the admin because there's already a system that Cardona State Government and Nigerian Railway and the Office of the DM might have in place to ensure that the train rides on that route because of the particular uh, situation on the Cardona Bugaru, uh, that particular axis. And uh, the team came up and uh, tried as much as possible to rescue uh, the, 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 the victims. Uh, it's good to note also that there were 18 armed policemen, two per coach, because there were nine coaches, who, who tried as much as possible to resist the attack. And the terrain was so, uh, I think it was, I, I won't say it's bad on our side, but it was good on the bandit side, in the sense that there was a, about 10 meter cutting. They were just on top and fire it down on the on the coaches. In, you know, when you have arm, um, it's the first to strike. So that is why they, 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 we never thought or oh, at that particular evening there's going to be an attack. So you don't expect them to just be, uh, be ready. But those who plan to attack were at least if you say 110% ready. It, so. You know, it, it is, um, how would I put it now? It is very worrisome, you, the last statement you just made. But I think first, it's important to say that uh, we know that of the eight people who lost their lives, members of staff of yeah, the really. Nigeria Railway Corporation uh, were also amongst them. And uh, our condolences to you on that. Thanks, yeah. However, there'll be questions because it would seem that this bandits already gave, or this terrorist already gave an indication that this is something that is a possibility. And I'm sure that that's one of the reasons why you have uh, security men on the coaches uh, to reassure travelers that um, you are taking care of security and the probability mm. that this is a possibility. Yeah. Am I correct? Very correct. If that is the case, um, when you say that we're not exactly ready, we're not exactly prepared, it, it looks like there is a contradiction in your statement. You, know, you see, you are carry arm, I'm carry arm. I'm not ready to shoot you, but you are ready to shoot me. You have positioned yourself to shoot at me. I have to react. So the person initiating the action will definitely have the upper hand. Mm. That's what I mean. Uh, we have, since we started Kaduna Abuja, we had policemen on train because we know the Kaduna Abuja. Uh, before we started was uh, a, a, a dark spot. So that's why we had, before now, uh, on uh, even when you run train to Kano, we just have St. John ambulances, man who were on train. The insecurity was not as tense as this. But when we started Kaduna Abuja, knowing what was happen, happening between, uh, on, the, on the highway, we have to deploy, uh, as, as per coach, two armed policemen. So, but the policemen will not be carrying their gun, ready to shoot. Uh, you got what I mean? So the issue was that the people who plan to attack that evening, we are ready and they are planted something on the track to ensure that the train, maybe forget, uh, forget, uh, they had an experience of what happened before that. When they tried to attack, the train could move forward. And at this particular time, they also, I think they, they did not just stop at where they planted the bomb, they were now in, ahead of uh, that place. And they, according to them, I was not there. They were so many and shooting from right, left, and people sent them back. So it is. Uh, it, it was like a war situation. So it was a it was a situation that the Nigeria Railway Corporation never anticipated. 
how will you be planning that somebody will come and attack you? Um, how? Well, given the given what we have seen of um, you know of the security situation in the country in general, mm. what we have heard, the very fact that uh, you know there have been even me as an ordinary <laughs> as an ordinary Nigerian, mm. um, if you ever asked if I felt safe, I mean, I've taken the Abuja Kaduna train a few times, yeah. and what I saw the security men who were on the train, I just felt they were more of a deterrence. I figured that if there was a real attack. Mm. You know, the chances are very high that we could be in real trouble. Um, and, and it wasn't that that was what happened um, on Tuesday. Are you saying that at, at the level of planning, at the level of authority, nobody ever thought that from what we have seen, the kinds of attacks we have heard, people going on motorcycles in droves uh, to villages, to, you know, to communities, that that could never have happened to the train? I will. Uh, I don't want to go into that controversy. Mm. Uh, if you talk about real operation, I, will, I, will, I would be born on security. Mm -hmm. I don't pretend to be an expert. We have them there, and they are talk to us, and we talk to them. So uh, we have a commissioner of police. We have a commandant, civil defense, and we have some DSS mm. working with us. And we call them for meeting, and we listen to them. So I believe I'm not. Uh, uh, what do I don't want. To, as a real technocrat, I know the operation, and we have element of security embedded in it in our signal and control. Uh, okay, so I, yeah. I, I mean, in a moment, I'm going to be throwing this back to Lagos. But there are two things I'd like you to react to. First is the comment of the Kaduna State Governor. Uh, who said that they had already told the Nigeria Railway Corporation to um, not operate the night service because of this sort of thing. I mean, they, they felt that if there was any attack, it would not be quick enough. Response time might be slower than if it happened during the day. Did you ever receive such an alert? And what was the response yeah, we, of your yeah, organization we got, we to got it? that report in December, January, and we met with them as, OK, are we saying... If by tomorrow they said don't operate Kaduna Abuja, we stop operation. So as a body, what well, now that you have information that there's possible going to be an attack, why wait till the attack? Nip the problem. Since you hear them, since you listen to them, why wait? So I, I, you see, as a government, you don't give it. Because you, I don't want to be part of this uh, uh, controversy. I'm not a newsmaker. And uh, if you notice them and you see them and you know they are coming, why wait till on Monday night? So if you say that you mm. had this information December, January, yeah. and the, the Kaduna State government really did say so. Yeah. You are the head of the Nigeria Railway. You might say that you are not a newsmaker, but right yeah. now, the railway service which you operate is making the news, and it's not for very good reason. And mm -hmm. this has the capacity to affect the confidence of those who use this service. There have been many other reports which we have been regaled with, uh, but we know that the Abuja Kaduna has been a very critical, um, in fact, it was the start of, it was same, of a new dawn for the Nigeria Railway Service. For the Nigerians and Nigeria, not oh, just Nigeria oh, Railway Corporation. Indeed, so the, yeah, I, for all of us. So yeah. it was extremely important that if any security information was coming in, yeah. uh, that you would have, you know, given it a second consideration. You to don't stop operation. So. For the night service. We don't do night service. We do evening service. Evening in other service. areas, we do night evening service. Evening service. Even, even, like, let me start an example. Last week, Friday, mm -hmm. we had an information right in Mina and say, stop. There is a place, uh, uh power is not safe. We stopped. And not the difference from that. We saw some movement and we saw this, we saw that. That was specific. And they now gave us clearance to move. Uh, day before yesterday, we had. Uh, Good strain, the same good strain. They got to Mina, they gave a specific instruction, stop, and later said, go ahead, and we obeyed. But when you say there are some movement, we are some news, we did. 
are we going to stop? So I don't, uh, I shy away from. What yeah, about the evening service? I mean, did you have any concerns about it? I know that usually, you, as you correctly clarified, you don't operate a night service. But the evening service usually, you know, dovetails into when it is dark. Yeah. I have taken the evening service before, yeah. and I know that when I enter Abuja, it is usually quite dark, uh, coming from the Udo end. Uh -huh. So did you have any, exercise any fears that given this, um, given this intelligence which we have, maybe we should stop the evening service for now? Uh, if, if, so we should give in to the terrorist or to the bandit. Mm -hmm. so, Would that be how you would have interpreted that? Was that how your agency was, or your or corporation we, we, was We believe, it? you see, what is the aim of doing this? To stop operation or for Nigerians not to benefit in what government is doing. So government should give in. So it, it, as I said earlier, if we have the intelligence to know, it, if yesterday, when we went to site on Tuesday with three ministers on board, this incident still happened. And the advice was that come down, go by road. I said, how many people are on the train that want us to go by road? Luckily, the ministers on board said, go ahead with the train. And I said, luckily for us, we arrived at Abuja safe. So we would have come down looking for buses. Ah, what confidence are you giving to your people? You see, I'm doing my work. People should do their work. Let's flip this to my colleagues and English gentlemen. Before we thank you very much, Mark. Well, just before we take this back to, uh, to, to get into the conversation, because uh, Colonel Hazan Stanlabo is also here with us to discuss some issues. I understand Olu Phillips has an update at the Lekki uh, concerning this Lekki toll gate issue. Olu, what's the issue? Now? What's, what's new? <laughs> We can hear you. I understand that the, the a, a security man is covering our camera right now from what you can see. He's using his hand to cover the camera, the lens of our camera, so that you don't get to see what is happening right now. I don't know how this is playing out, but um, just as we just heard, let people be allowed to do their jobs. The main challenge we have seen about this issue is that of communication, the absence of communication, the lack of communication from the government to the people. Already, as you can hear, you can hear people's voices. People are agitated about one thing or the other, and people need to know exactly what is happening. Someone is covering our lenses so that you don't see what is happening. I don't know what you make of this, but this is what is happening right now at the Lekki toll gate. We don't know whether it's the one at Am Admiralty Junction or the one at the Lekki Koyu Link Bridge, but we will definitely get an update on this, just so you know that this is exactly what is happening right now. led uh, to the altercation which you're seeing right now. Already you can see men, security men, trying to block, obstruct our camera. And clearly this is premeditated. This is deliberate because the camera was rolling and our correspondent was trying to give an update. And there you see the hand uh, trying to cover uh, the lens of our camera. It is important to... Let's listen in. Where is 
Correspondent uh, at the Lekki Koi Link Bridge is trying to, I mean, inform Nigerians of what is going on right now. And at this point, we can't really speak to his safety. He's currently, as you can hear, being harassed uh, by security officials. Our lens has been covered so that Nigerians can't see what exactly is going on there. And we fear uh, that his right is being trampled upon as we speak. So we, we ask the appropriate authorities, the police, uh, the people in charge of, of the security there. In fact, the LCC, the, the concession company, and the state government uh, to ensure that what is right is done. The police has put out a statement uh, that they will not uh, infringe on the rights of uh, people to move freely, to go about their legitimate uh, work, which Olu Phillips, our correspondent, is doing. And he's properly identified. He has a channel's flag on him, and he's been reporting on that situation. So currently, we're worried about the situation, and we'll definitely bring you the updates well, as we have them. also asking that the government and the officials of government who are right now uh, listening to and watching this conversation to step in, make the appropriate calls, and let people know what is happening right now, because this is not the kind of representation you want to give to people, especially given the meeting that held yesterday and the opposition of the people and the appeal the understanding that government was seeking on behalf of, uh, of itself for the same people. Because I understand that governance is about people. The LCC, the Lekki, Torgate, Link Bridge and all is supposed to be for that reason. This is the, the live feed now. Olu is trying uh, to ensure that he, the needful is done. And policemen are most certainly not allowing him to do his job. This is live right now. Uh, our, our, our cameraman is doing his own job of ensuring that the needful is done to ensure that we bring you this report as and when we ought to bring it. Here is calling the Lagos State Commissioner of Police to make the appropriate calls. Let us do our jobs. You do yours, we do ours. We want the same thing. We all want the same thing. Let's see if we can listen in and hear the conversation going on now. If we're not here, we need to report it. Ah, well, it's about visual. It's about visual. It's about visual. To protest and we definitely uh, uh, I don't know what we, we make of this but as soon as we can get a uh, live feed from Olu Phillips our correspondent who as you can see right there having some conversations in with, fact this uh, is people. actually live oh, yes of course I, I said it earlier this is live from Lekki Tollgate now this is what is happening this very moment the Lagos State Commissioner of Police the Office of the Governor the Office of the, uh, the Commissioner for Information your attention is being called right now to this that you do not want to happen, this representation, this image that you do not want for the government of Lagos State. We definitely will bring you an update on this as it goes on. Well, while that is on, we still have Cornell Hazan Stan Labo here. Perhaps you will want to speak to uh, this a little bit. Uh, Security officials are supposed to do their jobs. The press, we're supposed to do our jobs. What do you, first of all, make of that um, altercation? Should it 
happen in the first place? What kind of, what kind of conversation, I don't know, what, what kind of uh, instructions do security men get when they go to forestall <coughs> uh, protests? Uh, thank you so much, Ayo. In the first place, I, I don't, uh, you know, expect any of these to be taking place because speaking uh, uh, like somebody who is actually seeing what's on ground, I don't see any rowdiness that would have probably, that would have led to all this. All they require is some understanding. The journalists should be allowed to do their job. The policemen should be allowed to do their job. I don't see how anybody is hindering anybody from doing his job. If the cameraman is picking his shots, he's picking shots of what's on ground. If you are hindering him from picking shots, then meaning you are, there is something illegal going on, which you don't want him to show the public. So you are conniving, and I see you as being complicit. Look, our, our actions should not send out the wrong signals. The policeman blocking the camera from picking images. What are you preventing the camera from picking? Are you shooting at someone again? Are we going back to, to, to the same lucky incidents again? I thought by now, we've all learned our lessons and everybody will actually be behaving. We can't go on this way, we are not kids. Well, as I said, let's just hope that the police uh, commissioner, the, off the police commissioner in Lagos, the governor of uh, the state, as well as the, <coughs> minister of the Ministry of Information uh, will also speak to this. But to the issue on hand, yeah. um, Conestan Labo, it definitely was disturbing when you heard about this attack on the Abuja Kaduna Express, uh, you know, train track. Uh, the fact that there were those other conversations about uh, intelligence reports and all of that, and particularly what you heard the MD of NRC just say that we shouldn't give in to these terrorists. What do you make of it? Uh, first and foremost, um, what went wrong? If you ask me what went wrong, I would say, look, in the first place, I think there was a failure of intelligence on the part of the military or the, 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 the security agencies. Failure of intelligence to have picked out what was supposed to happen. Most of all, we've had incidents like this at the airport and so on and so on. Once you have one incident, it's enough for, for you to throw your tentacles all places. But even after this, that of the road again happened, I think less than 24 hours. About the next day in the morning again, we had that of uh, what happened on the road again. And it begins to make you wonder what's beginning to happen with our intelligence community. I place the entire blame now on the intelligence community, be it the DMI, be it the DSS, be it the police, uh, what's it called, CID. You mentioned it, the entire intelligence community. Something is wrong. We've really got to sit up. Let's try to decrypt it. Just, just one second. Yes. Let's try to decrypt yeah. and take it from the base. I understand that there is at least one DSS official in every local government area in Nigeria. Okay. And I believe that between Abuja and Kaduna, there are quite a few local governments. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the DSS official is supposed to have a job to do. Mm -hmm. At that point, one, is expect, one would, ex would have expected that that information would have been given to the appropriate, the appropriate quarters. So when you say something is wrong, is it from that level or from the point of actioning or taking action on the intelligence information that they got? Irrespective, irrespective, I see the Kaduna Abuja road now to be a red spot completely. When I say now, I'm not just referring to now, right from when all these problems, you know, took off. I expect that by now, on the, let me call it the dashboard of every intelligence organization in this country. That patch, Kaduna Abuja Highway, should be painted red. That is, look, this is a no-go area. We mustn't joke with it. 
So even if you are allotting, I'm trying to justify what I'm saying now. Even if you are allotting a personnel to a certain jurisdiction, when it comes to that place, you give it special attention. Now, these various special attentions should all now be coordinated. Why am I saying this? I am still shocked that we still have attacks on that Cardona Highway. And it brings to question a lot of other issues, a plethora of issues we have often risen, bordering on manpower and what have you. By now, I expect that that window, especially that 30 kilometer window that involves those three communities, I've forgotten their names now. Regina and the rest. Yes, my dear. By now, that window, that patch, should have been infested and embedded by security personnel, such that for nearly every three or four citizens you see walking around there, two months with security personnel belonging to the intelligence, embedded, Do we have living in communities. Do we have that manpower? That is, I talked about manpower. Mm. Okay, why do we not have the manpower with a population of two hundred and something million, with graduates all over the place without jobs? How much are we paying them that we cannot engage them? Are we paying them the same 30 million we pay senators? Are these not small boys who pay 50, 60 million, uh, a thousand naira? Even the one we increased to the police, we have not even affected it. The point I'm making is, look, by now, we are in a state of war, my brother. And can we just act as if we're in a state of war? We are so complacent, we are so relaxed. And that is why all these things are happening. Why are we still talking about a manpower issue in the security sector of this country? Be it police, military, DSS, or what? Why are we still talking about a manpower issue? Can we just expand the training institutions and absorb more men? Hmm. So that we shan't be having all these manpower issues? This manpower thing is even a distraction to a lot of the issues I wanted to talk about. And, and let's, let's speak to some of those issues, if, yes, if we please. can. So this train attack that we were seeing is just um, an expression of a bigger issue. So we've had it in terms of school attacks from secondary schools, yeah. primary school, even university, mm. there's been kidnappings in their hundreds. We've had that. We've had attacks on roads, attacks on villages. We've had attacks on VIPs. We've had attack on the NDA, for crying out loud. So it's just different, you know, springing out yeah, of a major challenge. Tutorial. So if you can speak to us about this, I mean, you have the president time and again having meetings with the service chiefs. The latest we had a few days ago, just right after uh, the attack on the Abuja Kaduna uh, train. And the president gave an order, a marching order, as it were. This is something we've had time and time and again. So if you say that we're not being proactive, we're being lax, at what level will that be? And I think it goes back to the question you made. At what level are we being lax? Is it at the commanding level, at the disseminating level, at the operational level? Where exactly is this problem? I think there's a lot of deceit ongoing. I say this as a patriotic citizen. I say this as somebody who loves his country. There is a lot of deceit ongoing. Why? Are we saying to this moment, I thought the, the governor of Ghana State today yesterday also said we know where these guys are but that the military does not want to go bomb them. We just bought, is it 12 tokanos? So they are there acquiring dust and cobwebs. I was expecting that by now, nearly every spot in the north will be undergoing all sorts of bombardment where these guys are, sniffing them out. We know where these guys are. Why are we not going for them? But you know they just kidnapped uh, Why? people. If you know, will there be rights to bombard them, for example, with the people they just kidnapped? This is just asking you yes. an, an operational yes. level. Will there be right to ethically bombard? to bombard them, yes. for example, the ones responsible for this latest attack, yes. knowing that they have taken hostages? No, of course. Is it after they've taken hostages you want to go bombard them? Where were you? You never knew where they were before then. So this should have happened earlier. These are damn things that intelligence could have fetched all along and you could have carried out your actions. So in your opinion, you said there is deceit. Yes. In your opinion, where is this deceit coming from? Both from the strategic level and it falls down. 
To what end? Ask me. I just did. Ask me. The point is this. Look. And I, I don't like people always reading politics into it. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with politics. If anything, I think uh, individuals have their, their perceptions, their opinions, informed by whatever you want to call it, ethnic factors and what have you, all right? And in the course of interpreting this on ground, we begin to find situations where citizens suffer, even those who shouldn't be suffering. Connor, I'm Look, still at a loss. My, my apologies. I'm oh, still Jesus. at a loss. When you say there is deceit, I am trying because you, just as you said, you're speaking as a patriotic Nigerian and you are a security operative. So you definitely know a few things that many people don't. So when you say there is deceit, Ayo. what is the intention of the deceit? The reason I'm asking is this. Yes. People are dying. Yes. Livelihoods are being lost. Good. Lives are being lost. Good. Families are, are, being, are, are being disintegrated. Good. And governance is decrypting. Govern the, 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 the governor's forum just said, that, look, this is a collective failure of governance on the part of all of us. So when you say there is failure, uh, there is deceit, my apologies. Yes. At what point is it? Is it I, uh, at collaboration level, at the, the, of, at the office of the, the security operatives, at the president's office, the governor's? Where is this deceit? I, uh, after every incident, there is normally uh, a, a mini conference or a mini uh, discussions between uh, the president and the security chiefs where directives are issued and so on and so forth. Am I right? After that, what else do we see? Why am I talking about there seem to be a deceit here and there? Individuals who we keep telling you, look, we know where these guys are. Go into the communities. Are we saying there are people who don't know where these guys are? The community members will tell you we know where they are. I'm from South Kaduna. Come to South Kaduna, they will tell you where they are. But nobody will go there to fetch them out. Why? That is the deceit I'm talking about. You not sit down and claim, look, they give you all sorts of reasons why it was not possible to fetch them out, this and that and so on. And day after day, people are being buried in South Kaduna, buried in parts of Kaduna State, and so on. What reasons are given? You said all manners of reasons. All sorts of reasons. So what else do you expect? Other than they tell, uh, they tell you how oh, before we arrived, they had left this, that, and that, and so on. How would they not have left when you arrived eight hours after incident had taken place? So who's the greatest? And so on beneficiary, pardon me, who's the greatest beneficiary of this chaos? I, I, maybe that would be a way to understand where the problem is. Who benefits the most from all of this chaos? Well, the individuals are both the strategic level and middle level, strategic level, who know what they are out there to achieve. Strategic level okay. where? Both political strategic level, in fact, political strategic level. But you also said okay. there is no politics in, in this. You said we shouldn't read politics into it. I said political strategic level. I didn't say we are reading, I'm bringing politics to bear on it. When you bring politics to bear on it, you are trying to probably say it's a party thing because of 2023 and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about political strategic level now. You are talking about uh, uh, the, the topmost strategic level. Mm -hmm. Okay? After that, you come down to uh, you're you, a strata. You also said that the people in the communities know where these people are. Yes. And I also know, I mean, we, we discussed this yes. yesterday, that Kaduna is about the most fortified uh, states in Nigeria with all kinds of uh, military formations here and there. So yes. So how come all of this is happening, yes. the people know, and then yet we, this is what we still That have. is a big question. Kaduna is about the most fortified of all the states, yet Kaduna is the most boiling state where incidents are happening on a daily basis, Who should, where barriers are taking place on a daily basis. Who should be most embarrassed by this? I expect the chief executive to be. And of course, he has not hidden it. Because definitely, he knows, as far as security is concerned, he has failed. When you say he chief executive... He may, he may, just a minute, please. He may have tried all his best, but definitely, we cannot give him a plus when it comes to security. When you say chief executive, which one? Federal or state? 
Oh, they, they know the seat now. We are talking about Kaduna now. Yes, but, but when, when it comes to the federal, of course, Mr. President, the book rests on his table. Even the president knows he's a failure when it comes to security. Do we need anybody to say that anymore? Are we sure we can sit here and score Mr. President 40% on security? Unless we flank. Unless we want to, <laughs> in our usual way, play for, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, and score him 90%. Okay. Well, there's still much more okay. to say about that. We'll go back to Abuja shortly. But just before we do that, uh, we want to take a quick uh, update from Olu Phillips, our correspondent, uh, covering the Lekki toll gate um, issue. Olu? Hope we have you well and good. Yeah. Can you hear well, me, Olu? Um, guys, we knew, we saw this coming, we knew it was going to happen, and uh, we prepared for it. We knew some people were going to try to get over Zillia. Some 30 minutes ago, we tried to record, and we had a swarm, um, um, the policemen. Um, latching on, on us and pulling us, dragging us, taking away our cameras. Um, they took away this microphone and they grabbed my glasses. They've taken it off. So uh, permit me and uh, forgive me for squinting. Uh, they've taken away my earpiece, my broadcast earpiece too, so that I'm not able to do anything. And this was happening live in front of the LCC MD who ordered that they should do that. We have him on record. We have him on film when he ordered that the policemen should harass us. They harassed us. Uh, picked me up, um, took me to their car, and after a while, released me, and uh, this is where we are right now, and this is what's happening. It took the interventions of some Nigerians who had to pack their cars to ask why um, journalists are being har why are journalists being harassed uh, on a day like this and while they are doing their job. Uh, this is the situation here, and um, we hope it doesn't de degenerate while we do our constitutionally provided job, guys. Uh, Olu, just to be clear, uh, were you in any way uh, causing obstruction? Were you in any way doing anything untoward? Just to put it out there in case people were wondering. Okay, so this is it. I mean, guys, this is the spot we, sp we stood exactly some 30 minutes ago when it all started. Uh, we couldn't have been um, obstructing traffic. We're professionals. We knew what we were doing. What they didn't want was for us to film the, um, this area. They said this area belongs to them. The MD of LCC kept maintaining that this environment belongs to the LCC and that we couldn't film. I tried to explain to him that this is a public area, but he wouldn't listen. So he got his guys to uh, swamp on us and um, began to manhandle us and block our cameras, took the cameras away, um, grabbed my glasses so I couldn't really effectively uh, do what I was doing. Uh, took away, like I said earlier, our air, my airpiece, which is why I've resorted to a telephone call as it were. Okay, now, so what then, now, what is the update? What is it that informed all of that in the first place? What is the update? What is happening right now at that location? What's happened is after, um, it seemed like when we tried to stream earlier, um, some 10 seconds when the harassment started, um, all the journalists and other um, online guys um, swarmed into this place and started um, triggering, they triggered that recording. And um, so far, you can see that everybody is standing at ease as it were. Um, they've dispersed the Policemen have dispersed. They've left where we are. Um, I don't know, but everybody from the LCC, the, uh, the chief security officer who was earlier telling us to also get out of this place is nowhere here. The MD who was just standing across the road where my cameraman is showing you with those two men um, have also left, has walked away because um, he was also um, being filmed by other journalists who were here, who were monitoring what the harassment looked like. Well, Olu, most certainly we will have a full report from you before the end of the day. Thank you. And please, again, Keep safe. Well, the conversation at, uh, uh, on this Kaduna attacks is also going on. Uh, let's go to Abuja now. Let me quickly ask uh, Engineer Kiria before I throw it to you, Malkwe. Well, earlier, um, Engineer Kiria, we have heard all kinds of numbers bandied. Just would like you to clear the numbers. There are those who alleged once uh, 970 people were on board, 1,100 capacity for all coaches, and uh, the report that you put out says only 362 were validated. Can you bridge that gap for us? You see, that I purposely signed that uh, press release on, uh, by myself to authenticate the, re uh, the reality of time. I don't know who brought that figure of 980, if you have nine coaches, uh, 88 people in seven of them, uh, 56 in two, 
even if you had, then we said 840, including starting. I, I don't know who gave the figure of, nine, of 980. And people are still arguing. Is it 980? Is it 398? A document signed by at least the MD and the chief executive with a printout showing the names and phone numbers of the people that traveled and the people that bought tickets differently. 398 bought ticket, 392 validated, both before boarding and after boarding. So who is that person that entered that counted? One, two, three to nine eighty or nine seventy. So I think people just say what they want to say, and people hear what they want to hear, and uh, take that. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm a realistic. I'm too short of words, and uh, I say things as they are. Mm -hmm. So three ninety eight boarded. I uh, bought the ticket. Three ninety two validated to our boarded, excluding staff. However, we have made calls to uh, 123, confirming that they are safe. 17 others that we have been able to reach said they bought for their sibling, but they have not found them. As at uh, yesterday uh, evening. So they, my people are still right. working, but have not gotten the report this morning. So how many people are out of the 362? How many? Uh, they have been able to uh, get in touch with. That is where okay, we engineer, are just and just quickly, I've also received calls. Okay, uh, just quickly, from be, those that have been, that have been heard. Okay, uh, to what extent, uh, if you can, uh, can you validate or vouch for, uh, you know, the manifest, as it were, is this ticketing process, this ticketing system, under the purview of the NRC, or is it a third party that is in charge of this? So we have a third party who have, we have access to the, uh, the what call back end information. That is how we have to be able to account for what we earn and how much we receive. We have access to the back end, and we get a, we print the manifest uh, at the right at the stations. Because if you buy your ticket either on the on the web or on your app, or you come to the station, they go to the same uh, 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 server. So oh. it's. It, I don't know if you have used the train. I think you have used the train. Oh, we all have used the train. Uh -huh. But do, how do you bolt with your gate, uh, with and, your ticket? And I think that, you know, at the risk of stand, sounding like I was defending the NRC, I did, you know, let uh -huh. people who I follow on or who follow me on Twitter know that there have been significant improvements oh, in terms you. of ticketing. And maybe that's why we could even expect that there will be a manifest. But then there have been questions as to why it took so long. Because you have talked about why, uh, you know, the, the, the number of people, the initial number of 970, in fact, there was an information gap. Don't forget that this happened on... Uh, in the night or in the evening of, as you said, there's no night service. In the evening of... Uh, a Monday and uh, by Tuesday, of course, people newspapers have to print something. Uh, and they have to journalists, sell. Ha not they, they don't they have, have to, to say. No, no, no. It's not a question of uh, no, no. Um, uh, Mr. Have to Kiria, get I have to say something. It's not a question of selling. It's a question of information. There has to be clarity. But did they call How me many to people? Get the information? Did they, who did they call? That give them the 980. Who so should if they have, don't get, if whose, they don't get whose anybody, responsibility was it to put out that information there as quickly as possible? How, how, That's the question we should ask. If an incident has occurred, mm -hmm. whose responsibility is it to fill in the press as quickly? Must the press be the one to call? If there have been an incident, mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't, and people are already aware, because mm -hmm. don't forget that a lot of these things found their way to social media yeah. before the me mm -hmm. media houses. Don't forget Dr. Chinelo's tweet, uh, who confirmed that <laughs> she had been hit. And, you know, you saw the list of reactions. <laughs> so when you see those kind of incidences, while the NRC is responding, whose responsibility was it in-house to reach mainstream media houses to say, this tentatively is what we have and this is what we know? And we what did, was the information and, and we did flow? That. It, 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 the, uh, the following morning, I was uh, on channel, I was on NTA, and I expressed, you see, you have to get the figures right. Before, it, 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 you know how long it, it took channel to bring me here today? Because I was not playing. So you have to get the figure right. But uh, what I'm saying, can some job, somebody just wake up from his brain and say, ah, 980. 
and put it there. Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Yes. As a Tuesday morning, <laughs> we knew that as a Tuesday morning, 7 a.m., yes. we knew we had mm -hmm. information yeah. that seven bodies had been evacuated. Yes. That information did not come from the NRC. Yes. As an afternoon, mm -hmm. um, in uh, 12 noon in mm -hmm. the afternoon of that same Tuesday, mm -hmm. we were still expecting the manifest from the NRC. Mm -hmm. I don't think that information about the number of people who were on that train came until the evening of Tuesday. That was when we were able to confirm from the NRC how many people were on board. There was no tentative figure even given by the NRC to say, this is how many people our trains can even mm -hmm. carry. I said, now we're not able to fully confirm, we're still confirming, but this is what we have. There was no such information. It would seem that there was a total information block from the NRC, who wanted to be cocksure before they put out any information. How was that going to help anybody? OK. Uh, you see, we work in a system, and there are rules that govern us. And apart from that, you have to, you don't give one information today, tomorrow you give another one. You have to be quite sure, very sure, as I'm sure of what I'm saying right now. So uh, immediately happened, uh, oh, we, uh, 840 boarded because you have 840 seats without going back to the back end. And moreover, you should know when this thing happened, what should you be doing? We should be fighting to see how, can, how soon can we uh, get those people affected to their various, uh, where they can get treatment. How do you get the, those various people that are playing part now to get uh, involved and rescue people? not to start flashing news and all those things. Okay, but just quickly. That same day, we gave a press release. I'm sure you can appreciate that there are people who were, you know, very worried about what had happened on the train. The people who were affected by that incident, uh, and a lot of, number of them who had tweeted, had family members who have, were very anxious. Mm. And I'm sure a lot of them were looking to... How will the, figure, the, how will the, the wrong figure help just them? Let me help. Let me clarify mm. what I need to say. And they, they were looking to, you know, getting information from media houses and from information quarters, such as the NRCs, maybe information desk, et cetera, et cetera. So that even if you didn't have the full... Uh, picture of the information, whatever it is you get as you get it, you were updating the media. Uh, we didn't see that from the NRC. It didn't seem like it was a nimble organization in that regard. You see, those people, they, that night I didn't sleep. Those people who have uh, people on train, we are calling my number. I don't reject numbers. And I was answering them. So, and they had, we had set up a desk for people to call. How and quickly was that done? It, it, it immediately happened. You see, people still, our staff still went to site that night when the soldier permitted them to come. We sent another uh, train that unfortunately delayed at the point of the bomb, which we should not have done. But because of the anxiety and people, we sent another train that night at about 11 p.m. to help uh, move our people from the site. So that should be the primary thing at that time as a railway person, not as a news person. So the issue is that we release and this, what does it, hours delay in getting prayer and getting the fake one out. A person who had no idea of, maybe has not even seen the trade, gave a figure and people are brandishing it because they just want to follow a ship on the social media or, <laughs> we have to help ourselves. Let me flip this to my colleagues, gentlemen. Um, thank you very much, Mark. We, we actually appreciate having to clear the air because I mean, it's important to have the communication to people uh, so they don't get to believe the wrong thing. But, I, I, Engineer, I'd like you to take a look at this, uh, this uh, picture uh, taken from the scene of the incident. And a lot of people have been counting the coaches, and I'd like to uh, get your, uh, your thoughts on this. Uh, so counting that, I mean, at least after the engine, you can see, uh, what, at least 11 coaches. The same as the eight that you referenced, or is there a different way to count uh, the coaches? Because a lot of people have been counting, and it looks like uh, what see, they are seeing is different. <laughs> you see, I, I've just mentioned that you have nine, I said nine coaches. I just mentioned the different classes. That's why you had eight. You have the locomotive making 10. I said we also sent a set of three coaches 
to move people from site. But unfortunately, the train also derailed at the point of the blast. So if you count that, you have 12 trains and two uh, uh, locomotives at site. So the, the, those, all the coaches we are not on that train. The train, a set of three coaches and one locomotive was sent. Uh, engineer, site. what we're looking at, just to be clear, what we're looking at mm -hmm. is the original train, right, that left um, yes. Abuja for Kaduna at 6 p.m. on Monday. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. So I can yes. count at least 11 coaches plus the engine. That's 12. I can't count 11 there. Okay. okay. Well, there's a numbering on top of it, so you might just want to follow. But just to be to be clear, it looks like there are 11 I, of them. So maybe I was you might there, want I to was there back. physically. That's where, that's where the issue, and your cameramen, we are there physically. I just asked the person who came there, how many coaches? It's not showing pictures. Okay, so this is not the, the, your staff, the, the image. Your, 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 photo, your, your, your reporter was there. Your, so it's not uh, Just to be clear, so this is, is this the image or the not? Uh, um, Engineer Kira, if you can hear me, just, uh, just yes or no, is this the image of the train that was involved in that incident or not? I can't see, but that is the spot. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, also, um, in terms of security, we're, we're trying to wind down on this all-important conversation. So you said that it might take two weeks uh, to repair this, but there's that uh, element of security, the surveillance which the Minister of Transport has spoken about, saying uh, it will cost billions. Is that also factored into the two weeks completion, or this might even take longer than two weeks? Okay. If you're talking about the security that will have to be deployed, we have not uh, got into that stage because we have to get approval first. Uh, we are, I'm talking about the time it will take us to move those uh, coaches out of sight and fix the track. And that depends also on the uh, uh, guarantee of security for, for the staff. That if they come there, they are safe. If they say don't, uh, today don't come to site, we'll, I will not force the staff to go to site. So. And, and as Mark has have, said, or uh, at least eight hours a day to walk, at least with two weeks' time, we'll be able to move out the coaches, then fix the track. As Mark has said, it's important to uh, try to boost the confidence of people in this service, and security will play a major role. So, for this surveillance system that will be procured, will that be uh, handled by? the NRC or, trans, uh, or security agency or a third party, uh, the same way as the ticketing is being handled? You see, the, the security, the minister is talking about is installing and embedding it into our operation so that you can have real-time monitoring of what is happening on the track. And if there's a, uh, somebody try uh, to tamper the trap, not authorize, uh, there should be an alarm and we will inform the security of what is happening. So it's part of going to be a signal, a safe control uh, uh, system that, that, that will make us see uh, uh, real time what is happening on the track. What we have now is that we have CCTV on the coaches. So when we move these coaches to, to the workshop, we're able to download what, and if we are lucky, get the images of those people that attack the train, that enter the coach. So we also want to have a similar thing on the track so that you can record, even if it's cow, you know it's cow that's passing. If it's the authorized staff, you see the picture of why they are walking. If it's uh, uh, somebody who dug the ground and started planting bomb, we will also see real time. You, you just not, it has to be ringed by that. You, you, you have to have it, uh, if one system fail, another one will take up. If GSM fail, radio will come in, satellite will come in. That's when you can say you have uh, yeah. is, 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 is the communication, that is the information that okay. will lead people to, 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 to know whether to run or not to run. Okay. Just before we close this... Uh... It is, it, rightfully so. There's been plenty of focus now, or there's plenty of focus now on the Abuja Kaduna uh, rail line, and I also believe that there might be some also 
on the, uh, the, the Cano Lagos line as well. Looking at what we saw in Zaria yesterday, where you lost a driver, uh, very sad incident indeed. But you know, what other assurances do we have for the other lines? Lagos Ibadan has started, uh, and a lot of people are happy with that service. Um, never mind one or two incidents that we've seen. <laughs> but the, the the two things now, and as, as I did say in my disclaimer. The, the ticketing system on the Abuja Kaduna rail, it was said that that has, you know, there's yeah, been no. some marked yeah. improvement there. But we're not able to say the same for the Wari Itakwe line. Mm. We're also not able to confirm if this is the same Lagos for the Ibadan. Lagos Ibadan line. Okay. So, uh, what can you tell us okay. where, about where, those lines first? Where are the final stage of uh, concluding that? You see, we are using uh, APP. Free sort of arrangement with ICROC. People uh, have to invest and operate and transfer. And you have to operate for some time to know what volume of passenger you expect before you have before you get the investment. Right now, the due diligence has been done for those companies. We started the process and I think we hope by next week we'll be able to get the certificate from ICROC compliant. Then we send it to BPP, then we go to uh, cabinet office. Mm. You're so saying we, what we, we are targeting maybe two in the next two months we should conclude that and they start deploying it because we know the difference we are uh, between uh, the e ticketing to the drive in Abuja Kaduna mm -hmm. apart from the any that had uh, doubled we also know the headache he has removed people no longer call me I want to travel please help me with ticket if you call me I say go go to the I can if I want to help you I say go to the Platform. Use, uh, platform too, so you can swear to that yourself. Mm. Uh, but when you do manually, uh, somebody can call you say, I am the police, I want to travel. So, so uh, I mean, are you, you, as, as we speak, we know that that is not yet the case for the worry it's the line. Down, no. And we also know that there have been some misdemeanors, in fact, some serious security breaches on the worry it's line yeah. that has been caught on camera, you know, where yeah. trains are stopping in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and are picking passengers, not at designated stations, <laughs> and are picking passengers illegally on board. <laughs> we have seen that. Uh, we've also seen, uh, you know, the Lagos Ibadan line <laughs> where diesel... Well. <laughs> finished on the train. I mean, these are incidences that are, you know, they leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, so yeah. you say that you are the technocrat when it comes to rail operations. Mm. What can you tell us about that? You see, uh, we are, you have technology, you have a human being element when you operate a, a system. And that's the, the one of Lagos Ibadan, where they talk about disease failure. The driver said the gauge was low of fuel and he signed that alert and we have a workshop at papalanto at that level they will not even contact me and they say okay if that is the case but we don't believe because we know the fuel that can take you from lagos to Ibadan and back the the, the, the diesel locomotive have uh five thousand uh, liter tank and there were two diesel locomotives on that train. So, and once the driver raised that alarm, it is the uh, duty of the technician to say, which solution do I provide? Do I wait there to see if, if there is a problem or do I take diesel? Mm. So they were solving the problem at both ends. Well, I know that you have since uh, clarified that there was some hanky panky going on. Yeah. But I think for me, the biggest, prop, the biggest concern, and for many Nigerians, will be security. Mm. Uh, these are the kinds of things that That's... provide room for you know, security mm. breaches. So what exactly are the assurances we are providing on these lines as well? You see, as I said earlier, such a thing can never happen because we have ever learned from that experience. And uh, I'm not saying that you cannot, you cannot rule out failure on uh, mechanical things, but I've taken it to the level that you should take a locomotive or a coach as an airplane, like when you have a failure, it's like a plane crashing. So that the, I think that should be the first time it has happened since we started. And we have I've spoken to the engineers and technicians and the operators never to allow such a thing to happen. However, we are still digging deep to know what actually happened. And those involved in such uh, will not be left 
uh, in the system. Are you putting uh, new security measures on board for the other lines, more specifically? You see, as the managing director of Nigerian Railway Corporation, it is for me to inform those to provide the security, uh, that in, uh, both in writing and co continue to parley with them, which we are doing. We, we meet, I meet with the commissioner, I meet with the commandant, and I will make an external call. Uh, on, on Tuesday, I wrote a letter to the IG trying to say uh, uh, nothing wrong with deploying Evo Mobile to guide our train, and they approved. Oh. So <laughs> we tell them when we have information, and they also tell us when they have information, and we react. But we see you cannot limit this insecurity into real. We cannot isolate it. We sincerely hope that this will be the last of the incidences we record on our railway lines. We have to thank you for coming on uh, Sunrise Today this morning. Uh, Mr. Fidet Okiria is the managing director of the Nigeria Railway Corporation. Is it out to you, gentlemen in Lagos? Thank you, Malcolm. Just before we let you go, Colonel uh, Stanlabo, about Speaking specifically to this, only back up to the Lagos, uh, beg your pardon, Abuja Kaduna Road, which is a railway system. We, of course, know that there's the airport as well. What are the gaps you think we need to fill now as a matter of urgency and then perhaps sustainably in order not to have this kind of attack that we've had again? First and foremost, we must strive to marry technology to intelligence. We have all sorts of drones out there today. In fact, drones have gone to another level now. There is what now we call eyes in the sky equipment. Eyes in the sky equipment are drones that are either remotely controlled or piloted. Okay? And um, they, 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 they have their various, I would say, uh, control rooms scattered all over. They send all sorts of information, engage for you if you want them to engage, and so on. We could have, should, by now, we should have graduated to that level and man that Kaduna uh, Abuja Highway, besides the issue of infestation I was talking about, that is embedded men within the communities, and so on. Talking about that, uh, just before we go, yes, please. there is that very important place of human intelligence, people, community relations, and all of that. A good number of people have spoken to that as well. So what do the people do? People have information, and uh, they need to give it to the security operatives. Uh, sometimes they give to security operatives, nothing happens. Sometimes they don't give it to security operatives. There are allegations that people give information to, to these terrorists as yeah, well. How, how do we, what, what are the things that we need to do in this, in this regard in order for this patriotism that you talked about to be entrenched across board? We keep seeing a lot of effort in the direction of civil military cooperation. I wonder how much this has been brought to bear into these communities so that communities will be able, as much as possible, to earn the, 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 the respect or trust of the uh, security agencies and so on. Unfortunately, there is this distrust in some of these communities out of fear and what have you, because people get at times get uh, information across, and there are always backlash mm. and things like that. We should strive to see that we do away with all this. Right. If we do away with all this, then we can really gain the hearts and minds of the communities. And then, of course, it will be easier to float through. And, and I think that's a great place to anchor, Colonel. Uh, I mean, the day didn't quite turn out as we wanted to, but I think some of the issues have been raised. It's an ongoing conversation. I would like to thank you, uh, Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo, former Army officer, security risk management consultant, and defense strategist for your time on the program this morning. I appreciate it. So, we have another issue for you just before we go, and that's in a moment. Please don't go anywhere. Ghana have done it. Ghana have qualified for the World Cup.
The qualification of Ghana for this year's FIFA World Cup in Qatar means Nigeria will be missing at the competition. The reality of the failure of the Super Eagles to qualify for the World Cup dawns on the football fans. The headlines from the newspapers capture the mood of many Nigerians as they are forced to watch the World Cup in the Gulf nation without their team. We believe that we can qualify for this tournament. But now, so everybody was down because we don't know because everybody uh, are, not, are not happy at all. So, you know, so maybe because we initially we thought that maybe the game will be very, very easy for us. But now, so we are very, very disappointed. So bad. It's another bad omen, bad development for football in West Africa, I would say. Not just in Nigeria because we are the largest talent, football talent producing country in the world, in the black world, uh, is bad. And I think it calls for another, maybe internal, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say restructuring, but going back. Because over the years, we've been calling for inclusion of local talent. And when there is no local talent, things like this comes up. Yes, I stand to be corrected. We can't just parade all pros. Yeah, we can't just parade all pros and look at what has happened. Game of football. We didn't take our chances in Kumasi. And here, they went ahead in the 11th minute to score their, their first goal. That is when I knew it has gone to the wire. We equalized 11 minutes later, 22 minutes to be precise. But then we couldn't. If you watch the game yesterday, we are still far from the traditional style of play. Our players are playing as if there is no hunger. You know, they underrated Ghanaians because of their poor performance in the Nations Cup. And they think it's going to be a, a, a rollover, a walkover. So that's why we find ourselves in that situation. Because I can't expect us to get to, to, to have scored us three minutes in the game. Because we don't put our acts together. We believe we are going to sue because we have gotten a uh, uh, nil-nil draw uh, in, in, in uh, uh, Kumasi. So I expect our people to come out and play with anger. The conduct of the fans at the MK Wabiola National Stadium in Abuja after the game comes under heavy scrutiny. If we cannot control fans in a single game, then how can we host a big tournament like Nations Cup, like World Cup? It tells. It goes a long way to put, I mean, destinations on our security arrangement. It's appalling. It's not accepted and um, it's bad. It's a bad development because the world are watching. And tomorrow we want to apply to host this game, to host this game. They make recourse to what has just happened. Because we should grow past this now. The Super Eagles will be missing the World Cup for the first time since 2006 when they failed to reach the tournament in Germany. Nigeria right back in this. Well, just uh, a quick one with Shwaibu Gara Gombe, who is former chairman, Gombe State Football Association, former secretary, Nigeria Football Stakeholders Forum, and CEO, Green White Green Sports Center Limited. Thanks for joining us this morning. Sincere apologies, we had to keep you a little longer than we should have. But then, what do you make of all the conversations in the aftermath of the Nigeria Ghana March? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it's unfortunate what happened. For me, it's expected. And uh, what happened is a product and a combination of so many uh, factors. We lost to qualify for the World Cup, not on the Petpool Tuesday. We lost to qualify for the World Cup as far as I'm concerned four, five years ago after the appointment of Ro as the technical advisor or coach of the uh, Super Eagles. Then also, we lost to qualify for the World Cup due to the decay in the local league. And if you like, I will add the third factor is that the supervising authority of our football management has been weak at some point in time where we failed to intervene to put things right and we thought that everything is okay. And lastly, also, if you like, also is corruption. So these are some of the factors as far as I'm concerned 
that led to uh, the unfortunate uh, incidents that we have seen, even after the match. The violence, the destruction of the uh, uh, Mushul Abiola uh, Stadium in uh, Buja is a reflection of what happened even in our local league. We cannot even organize a simple crowd control or security architecture on management of our sporting arena and uh, uh, events has already exposed us that uh, so many things are wrong with our football uh, in uh, this in Nigeria. Now, with the sack, so to speak, of the technical crew of the team now, what are your expectations? There are those who are expecting that the reset button should be pressed not only on the Super Eagles, but on our football apparatus, given some of the issues that you have raised as well. What are the critical things that you think will help revive football in Nigeria the way we had it back in time? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to look at the entire status. What I mean, status, the laws governing football in Nigeria, both internal and external. What I mean external is that we imported certain rules from FIFA that have not been domesticated and they are not known to our constitution. And internally also, the status of uh, Nigerian football, the way we operate it, and the stakeholders that are in there who are the Congress that determine who manages and who leads uh, this in Nigerian football is so imperfect that it gives us the room to be appointing or keep on allowing mediocre or people who have overstayed their welcome or who lack the capacity to manage our football. So that has to be rejected. And that is why I said earlier that the supervising authority of our sports, especially in football, are weak to act when they are supposed to act. That is number one. Number two, if we don't deal with corruption, corruption will kill our football. In fact, it has done that now. We have seen where there are so many incidences and cases of corruption that have not been handled, they are still outstanding. If we can take one and use it as an example, everybody is going to sit up. And also, the local league that provides and produces these players to the uh, this national team is in total decay, is non existence. Our performances in the continent of our teams in the continent is a reflection of the way the decay in the uh, this in the local league. We rely so much on the external players of foreign league or from, we rely on diaspora to uh, feed our national teams at all levels. I don't, it's not only super egos. Almost if you ask me all the 13 national teams that we have, we rely on the diaspora to uh, play for players to manage the league, and we cannot continue that way. We have to go back to the grassroots, go back to the school, school sports, develop school sports, go to Ministry of Education now, for instance, if you ask, there is a budget for school sports. What is that budget being used for? If football is in our national sports, or we give football priority as a national sport, we have to integrate it into the curriculum of the physical and health education at the primary school level, then we grow. I did say in 1985, I keep on saying this, we won the first um, uh, edition of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup. 36 years after, now we are struggling to qualify for the World Cup. So what happened? It shows that there was no transition, proper transition, or oh, those players that we use as Under-17 are not really Under-17. And that brings us to the fact that most of those players who claim to be under 17 or under 20 in Nigerian football are not really under 17 or they are not really under 20 in Nigerian football. So there are so many things that has to be fixed and there are so many things that must be done. And also, if you like, I will add that why should football, why should government continue to fund football? There should be a transition for total disengagement of government from funding football because there is free money that people don't account for. That's why anybody can come as an administrator, take money that he wants, embezzle money, mismanage money, mismanage money, and get away with it. And nothing happens because the money is coming from government. 
Look at the stadium that was destroyed in Abuja. That stadium, I can assure you, if that match is played in Uyo, this cannot happen. If that match is played in Port Harcourt, this may not happen also. But because it's in Abuja and everybody sees that, okay, the national stadium in Abuja is for nobody. So anybody can come and do anything there to destroy. So let private sector be in charge, take the lead. Let the government provide the necessary uh, uh, policy direction and also the support to, for, for, for football in, in Nigeria. We have to disengage completely through a transition over three or four, five years to take government out of funding football. So private sector should, should take charge and also the integrity and capacity of those who are managing uh, uh, football should be those who know what it is not because those who are either have nothing to do, they do not have, uh, or they are bankrupt, or they don't have a particular job to do, then the next thing they look for where to go and they fix themselves to be in charge of our football and to, 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 to increase their fortunes in life. This Oh dear, just about the time we wanted to say thank you to Shaibu Gara Gombe, former chairman, Gombe State Football Association, former secretary, Nigeria Football Stakeholders Forum, and CEO, Green White Green Sports Center Limited. Most certainly we have to bring you back because there are so many issues that you have raised that need a little more clarity. I guess that's it for today. Yes, indeed. We'll stay with Channel Television for all the breaking stories during the course of a day. In the meantime, I'm Kyle Okikiri. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ayo Makinde. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Well, make sure you don't go fooling people around and make sure that you have yourself a beautiful Friday. I'm Maupo Ogun Yusuf.